So you're ready to take your audio game to the next level. You're ready to get involved in the wonderful wide, wide world of DAX. Well, congratulations and welcome aboard. Uh, but you've got to do your research and you've got to ask yourself a basic question. Do you want a $3,000 DAC or do you want a $30 DAC? Hi, I'm Bob and you are in the United States of Analog. And a couple disclaimers before I get into the meat, as they say, of this, of this review. First of all, all props and all respect to Randy the Cheap Audio Man. He's a good friend, he's a mentor of mine, and I in no way want to encroach upon his cheap audio territory, though we do delve into it sometimes. He's very good at it. And uh, I can't help myself sometimes but in my defense, we're going cheaper than the cheap audio man. We're going down into the basement to uh, find a product. Is it audiophile? I don't know. But it only costs 30 bucks. That's 30 Monopoly dollars there, in case you're wondering. That's from the Beatles Monopoly. 30 bucks. And uh, the second disclaimer is I realize I may be damaging my reputation by doing a Walmart audio find. All right, um, but listen, I consider myself to be an audio journalist, right? We all do. Everybody in this space is some kind of audio journalist. And, you know, if I don't bring this to you, somebody else will. So, yeah, I think it's important to know that these things are out there. You might find a use for this. I haven't found a use for it yet, but maybe you'll find a, a use for it. So those are my two disclaimers. And uh, let's get into it. Because the other day I was at Walmart and... All right, you're asking yourself, Bob, what are you doing at Walmart? I know, I don't look like a Walmart guy, but occasionally I go in there and, and by the way, stay in your lane. It's none of your business why I was at Walmart, all right? That's between me and my maker. There, there's a vinyl section there so I can justify it, all right? But I might, I might need to pick up some other products occasionally. But I was there and I saw this hanging on a hook. Let me read to you. Monster, digital to analog slash analog to digital. Wow, it's doing double duty there. Audio converter. Comes in this fancy box. Something tells me the box costs more than what's inside. 30 bucks. And it looks like, wow, it's got, uh, it's got a lot of things that uh, expensive DACs have. Digital inputs and digital outputs. And it looks like something that's either an analog mini jack or a headphone jack. Is there a headphone amp in here too? At 30 bucks? Man, I'm telling you what, it was hard to resist throwing this in my cart for 30 bucks, but I threw it in my cart and I bought it, only to find out that it's cheaper other places online. This is actually, I should have named this video the $24 DAC because I think that's what it goes for. I actually seen some that were reconditioned. <laughs> Who would recondition a $24 DAC, $30 DAC? I don't know. But anyway, they're out there. It's called the Mad One. I think the model number is the Mad One from Monster. So anyway, I brought this home and I put together a small system, not around the Monster DAC, but including the Monster DAC. And it's a near, I guess you would call it a near field listening station. I've only done a little bit of near field listening in my lifetime and I've had some pretty cool experiences doing that. You know, one of the great advantages is you can get your speakers easier into the room or easily into the room. Whereas upstairs where I have my big main listening system, my reference system with my fortes, you know, I'm not going to get those any farther than maybe two feet in the room. So um, that's one advantage to doing the near field thing. And yeah, sure enough, when I put this system in and I'll describe it in a second, and I started listening, I was sitting right here, just about two feet away from me, three feet away. Man, I was getting so much sound back here. I was getting a great center, center image and, and so much sound coming from behind the speakers, which I think is, is always so cool. I mean, that's one of the benchmarks to me of, of having a good system. But you don't always get that when your speakers are up against the wall or close to the front wall. So um, let me describe the system that I put together for you and for me. Of course, we've got this. This is it, right? This is the this is the suspect, the Monster ADDA converter. 
Anyway, we put the Monster into the system. Again, it's not built around the Monster DAC, but the Monster DAC is included in this system. So we have the Monster DAC, and you know when you, when you hold it in your hands, it's very light. Um, I put it on the kitchen scale. It weighed in at one and three quarters ounces. It's extremely light. I have no idea what's in here. There's a little set screw, right? I think that's a screw. You know what? That's the power light. So there, there is no way to really take this apart, I don't believe, unless you, unless you pry the top off, and that's probably glued on. They probably don't want you knowing what's inside, and I, I have no idea what's inside. And even though it only costs 30 bucks, I'm not going to break it, because you never know when you might need something like this down the road. But it's got uh, DC power. It's got that 5-volt USB power, and it did come with the... With the with the brick, the wall ward, or whatever that's called. You've got a mini jack here, which I guess you could go mini to RCA if you needed that capability, or maybe you can even put headphones in there to monitor what you're listening to. I have no idea why you would need that or how you would apply that, but uh, I guess you could. You've got RCA outputs. Well, it's also, it's an input-output, because again, this goes both ways. You've got <laughs> coax uh, input, you've got, uh, You've got optical output, optical input. You got a little switch, little clicky switch here for in and out. So listen, that's a lot of the stuff that you might find in a more expensive DAC. Now these, these terminals or these, um, these connections aren't even gold plated or anything, but you know, I can't say it's substantial. I can't say it's heavyweight. I can't say anything about it other than it's an AD to DA converter from Monster. Remember Monster? Monster was the craze back in the day. Back in the 80s? Man, if you didn't have Monster cables in your system, you were losing it life, apparently. I had Monster cables and Monster interconnects, but I guess they're in the DAC business now. They also sell a lot of boom boxes and weird Bluetooth speakers and stuff, so I don't know why. This is Monopoly money. <laughs> this is how much the DAC costs. 30 Beatles Monopoly dollars, okay? I don't know. I don't know why I pulled those out. I thought I would make a funny bit out of that, but I guess it wasn't so funny. So I got the monster. Uh, for the source, we have the Weem Mini. We've got the Fozzy Audio V3, brand new, supposedly 300 watt a channel amp. Uh, I don't think so, but you know, sounds pretty good. And this is the first time I've used it. I've got that in the chain, and that was my initial system at first. I will say, first off, in this quote-unquote review, this doesn't have a lot of uh, output power. It really reduced the sound of the whole system. So not a lot of output here. So after a little bit of listening, I decided to add the Magni Heresy headphone amp, which uh, I can also use as a preamp. So I put this all the way, all the way over, all the way up, all the way up, and then turn this about halfway, about 12 o'clock, okay, the Fozzy. Before I had put the um, uh, headphone amp in, the what I will call the preamp now, you know, I had to go to like 75% to get a decent sound level. So I connected it all up to the Sony SSCS5 speakers. These are actually signed by my friend Randy, the cheap audio man. I had him autograph them for me. Man, he sold a lot of those. I think he owns half a Sony at this point. Uh, because on his recommendations, a lot of these have been sold. So I got it all connected, and I sat there, and I started listening, and it sounded really great. I mean, I'm not kidding. It sounded really, really great. I was getting that, that 3D depth that I talk about so much way back here. I was getting Mark Knopfler's vocals way back here. And I was getting a great center, center image, and with the Fozzie, I wasn't getting any noise. And I didn't even think about the bass because I was so close to these and I felt like there was adequate bass. And I thought, man, this sounds pretty good. It sounds great. I mean, for what it is, right? And I called one of my sons in. I called Dylan, who's usually behind the camera, but he's playing video games right now. So I'm doing this all on my own. I brought my wife in and she heard it a little bit and everybody's like, wow, this is pretty cool. Near field, listening can be really enjoyable. You can get a lot of definition. You get closer to the music. It's, it's kind of that bridge between regular listening and headphone listening. Well, that's the way I look at it anyway. So 
I did a little experiment after that. I took the monster out of the chain. I, co I, I connected the Wii Mini directly into the, uh, the preamp now, and I'm, I, so avoiding the uh, monster, and then going into the amp to the speakers, and guess what? It didn't sound as good. It didn't sound as good. All right, this is $30. The Weem is $80, but it's a streamer with a DAC built in. Could it be that the DAC in here is better than the DAC in your Weem or in an ordinary CD player or in a computer? I don't know. I'm not going to spend that much time digging into a $30 DAC, but I can tell you that when I had this DAC in this small near-field system, I can't say that it's what made the system sound great, but it didn't take away from any of the sound of the system. It didn't hurt it, is what I'm saying. You know, it got me thinking about this thing. I mean, what are DACs? Are we being bamboozled by DAC manufacturers? Is this all you need? Are we simply converting ones and zeros to waveforms or analog sound? Are we being had? I don't think so because I know some really good people over at Trichelli Labs that make DACs and I don't think they would, they would uh, bamboozle anybody. Um, but yeah, um, it just got me thinking. So what are the uses for something like this? I don't know. At 30 bucks. You know what? I, I, this, is the, this is how I thought of it. And by the way, I, I forgot to mention this. Let me get my, my little note here. Um, when I connected this, to the Weem and using the Weem software, I was getting, I was passing 192.16 through here, so it wasn't too shabby. This is a DAC, I think, that is for people who need a DAC, not for people that want a DAC. Does that make sense? If you want a DAC, you want, you want to get something good, you want to get something within your budget, you want to get something, you know, get some bang for the buck. You want to improve the sound of your system. But sometimes, sometimes, just like a cable, just like an interconnect or speaker wire or anything, and maybe that's why Monster makes this, sometimes you just need a utility tool. You just need a DAC. Maybe you've got uh, a television with an optical out, but your receiver doesn't have any kind of digital inputs, just RCAs, and you want to go to that. Or you've got some kind of video system, video game system that doesn't have uh, optical outputs or coaxial outputs, coaxial outputs and, you, and you need something in between. Yeah, I think that's what this is for. Don't pay $30 for this though, pay $24 or get a refurbished one or get one used on eBay for $10 or $15. I don't know, I don't know what's in here. I'm fascinated, I'm always fascinated and I think maybe many of you are too about things that cost a little bit of money that do that do a lot of work, you know, that do a lot of things. Now this didn't hurt the system, didn't help it a great deal, but it didn't hurt it. And in some cases, versus the DAC inside the Weem, it actually um, made an improvement. So there you go, that's the uh, Monster Mad One, digital to analog, analog to digital, goes both ways. Switches between digital analog, analog to digital audio signals, two channels, LPCM, digital audio signal output, noise-free transmission. Yeah, I didn't hear a lot of noise. It does have pretty low output. Convert optical Toslink or SPDIF to analog, left-right audio signal, and much more. Beautiful box. I'm sure the box cost more than this cost. So that's my quick look. If you see this, at Walmart, yeah, maybe pick it up and throw it in your basket and then just put it away for a rainy day to play with it like I have in some kind of near field situation or just have it handy so that you don't have to go to the store on a Sunday afternoon when you get an old video game system out or a, you've got a TV that you want to hook up that, that, that doesn't have the right connections. You would, you would use this. So that's it. Thanks for joining me once again in the United States of Analog.